Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Weekly. This week, we have a lot to cover. We were already going to be talking about Saturn, which we will, currently making a very nice appearance with Jupiter in the evening sky. But uh, we've been a little bit surprised and delighted by a comet that you may have heard about. It's currently making just a delightful appearance in the evening sky. You've got a chance to see it, uh, certainly this week, and possibly for the rest of July. So we're going to show you where and when to look for that, and then we'll get to Saturn. So this comet, we are going to be calling it NEOWISE. That's part of its technical name, an acronym for the Space Telescope that discovered it back in March. The Near Earth Object Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, or NEOWISE. Well, this comet survived its closest approach to the sun on July 3rd, and on its outbound path, it's been making quite an appearance in the pre-dawn sky. But now, finally, you don't have to get up at 3 a.m. to see it. It's now climbing higher and higher in the evening sky. So we're looking here at about an hour after sunset, looking north-northwest. Now, I've seen it over the past few nights, naked eye, in Chicago. But the soonest I've seen it is about 70 minutes after the sun goes down, so around 9.30 here in Chicago. Adler's got a great finder chart for the comet, which we've also linked to in the description. So find the date that you're going to be looking. Go out maybe 30 minutes after sunset to kind of get your bearings, figure out which way you're going to be looking, move to uh, maybe account for trees or buildings that might get in the way. And then as the sky gets darker, take a look in the location indicated. Now, whether or not you can see it depends really on the quality of the sky. That's not necessarily light pollution, but how clear the sky is. As a rule of thumb, if you can see all seven stars in the Big Dipper, you've got a good chance of catching Neowise. Binoculars are going to help locate it, and then you can try lowering them to see if you can catch it with just your eyes. So all the pictures we're showing here, those were captured with just my entry-level DSLR camera and a telephoto lens. I've seen a couple good shots taken with smartphones that have a night sky mode, and I was also lucky enough to be able to snap a picture through my telescope using my smartphone. Now, fair warning, comets are notoriously unpredictable. We've already had two comets this year that looked promising, and then on their closest approach to the sun, they broke up and were no-shows. Neowise survived that closest approach to the sun, and it's making an impressive appearance, but it could dim faster than we expect, or it could have some outbursts of material and brighten considerably for a few days. We just don't know. And that's kind of part of the fun. You get out there, you check it out, you see what you can see, and hopefully you've got a chance to spot it. Okay, now on to Saturn. This is visible along with Jupiter very easily in the southeast after sunset. We talked last week about Jupiter and also Saturn reaching opposition this month. Saturn reaches opposition on the 20th. So you can watch last week's video for more details on opposition and also a lot about Jupiter. But overall, this means that Jupiter and Saturn right now, they're at their closest for the year and brightest in the sky right now. Saturn right now is easily seen in the evening in the southeast. It's quite a bit dimmer than Jupiter. In this view, they do look just about the same brightness. Uh, we're kind of emphasizing them here to uh, make them apparent on your screen. But Jupiter is the, really the one to look for first. It's dazzlingly bright. And then to the lower left of it, it's going to be the uh, fairly dimmer but still very visible Saturn. So it's dimmer. It's a smaller planet than Jupiter. And it's also about twice the distance right now. So Saturn doesn't offer quite that dazzling appearance that Jupiter does right now, or Venus sometimes does as well. Through binoculars, it's not going to show anything more than really a point of light. But the real treat is through a telescope. If you have a chance to see it, even through a small backyard telescope, it's a tremendous view. The rings will show up even in small telescopes, and in larger scopes, you can really start to get a three-dimensional impression through the eyepiece. The globe of Saturn is relatively featureless, certainly not showing the stark cloud bands that we saw with Jupiter. There's one moon to look for with a smaller telescope that's called Titan, the largest moon of Saturn. It'll appear within a telescopic view as a point of light near the planet. 
Now there are a lot of other moons. There's 82 at current count. Now a few of these are visible through larger backyard scopes, but for the most part they're too small to be seen. We saw these lunar and solar eclipses happening around Jupiter. It doesn't happen nearly as often around Saturn, and even when they do, they're just not as visible it's so much farther away than Jupiter is. So it seems like a lot of things that maybe aren't as good as Jupiter, but the real treat of Saturn, nobody's looking at the relatively featureless disk or maybe the lack of moons that you can see around it. They're looking at those rings. They are spectacular, even through small scopes. I still remember my first view of the rings of Saturn through a small telescope. It literally took my breath away. Now they're tilted right now towards us at a very nice angle. They reflect a lot of sunlight, and when they're angled like this, they add a lot to the brightness of Saturn. Consider this, Saturn's diameter is smaller than Jupiter, but the extent of the rings is much bigger than Jupiter's disk. We'll show you that right here. We're gonna put Jupiter in the rings of Saturn. That's real size, that's how big it would be. It would still fit within that inner edge of the rings. Well, the rings extend hundreds of thousands of miles end to end. Put that in perspective though, how big do you think Saturn would be in the Earth-Moon system? We know Saturn's much bigger than Earth, but would the rings fit between Earth and Moon? Well, maybe surprisingly, the answer is yes, with quite a bit of room to spare. While we're at it, let's look at another surprising fact about planet size. Let's take away Saturn's rings and slide it over toward the moon. All right, now how many planets do you think we could fit in between Earth and moon, lined up edge to edge? Well, let's start off with Jupiter. We'll stick that in right by Saturn. Let's add in some of the other giant planets. Here's Uranus, and then we can put Neptune in as well. Now, still quite a bit of room there between Neptune and Earth in this uh, very strange solar system we're building. So there's Mars, and we'll add in Venus and Mercury. Look at that. They all fit. I know I was surprised when I first heard about that, but all the planets can fit between Earth and the Moon. Now, full disclosure, the Moon's distance varies slightly from Earth, but even at the average distance, this still works. Okay, back to Saturn. The rings appear solid, but they're really made up of particles, dust and ice, water ice in fact, that's in those rings. And the size of those particles ranges from a grain of sand up to the size of a house. And despite their huge extent, on average they're only about 30 feet thick. Now we've classified them into a series of smaller rings with gaps between them. These gaps are caused by gravitational interactions with the moons and Saturn. So there's a, a gravitational tug of war over the ring particles, and that tends to clear out areas at specific distances from Saturn. The largest of these gaps is called the Cassini Division, and that's visible with really steady skies through backyard telescopes. So Saturn holds lots of beautiful things to look for, and even just to the naked eye, it's at its best along with Jupiter in the evening sky. These two are gonna be visible in the evening for the rest of 2020, but especially here in July, I encourage you to get out, look for the comet up in the north northwest, and then once you've seen it, or maybe once it sets, or maybe it's too cloudy in the north, turn around, face southeast, and get a look at Jupiter and Saturn. So we're gonna to return to them occasionally throughout the rest of the year with updates on things to look for. That's all gonna lead up to a spectacularly close conjunction of the two, in late December, so that's something to look forward to as well. But for now, get out, see the largest planets in the solar system at their finest, and possibly that comet as well. Well, we're gonna be taking the week off next week, so no video next Wednesday, but we'll be back July 29th with more great sky-watching content. Between now and then, you've got a chance to get up early and catch a pretty special sight, five naked-eye planets in the pre-dawn sky. We've been talking a lot about Jupiter and Saturn, but if you're out at maybe 4.30 a.m., you can see the sky has shifted quite a bit. So Jupiter and Saturn are over in the west-southwest getting ready to set. Mars at that point is almost due south, 
about halfway up in the sky. And Venus, blazingly bright in the east. So that's four. We've got Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus. Now to the lower left of Venus, quite low and only easily seen from about the 20th to the 27th, is Mercury. It's not going to be nearly as visible as it was during that nice evening appearance in May and June, but look for it here, less than a fist's width above the horizon, just north of east. That window between the 20th and 27th, that's when Mercury is most visible. The other four planets, though, they're really quite easily seen outside of that week. So if you're up early, go hunt some planets. That's only to see all five or maybe four at the same time. But Jupiter and Saturn, don't have to get up early. Just once the sky gets dark in the evening, give a look for them. So that's what we've got for you this week. Once again, no video next week, but we'll see you on the 29th. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and also follow the Adler Planetarium on social media for lots of great content. Thanks so much for watching and clear skies.